Hey there, viewers, and welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. We've got the 2017 Chrysler Pacifica. It's got the big 3.6. It was supposed to be coming in tomorrow uh, because the lady said it was using some water and it overheated on her, so she's keeping it full apparently and keeping it from overheating. However, uh, today she went to drive it and it won't start, it doesn't crank, doesn't do anything. So either A, she got it so hot she seized it up, or B, there's something else going wrong because, well, it's a Dodge. So I had to pull the orange safety strap down there to get it neutral to get it inside. And I don't believe that it's gonna be super difficult because when we push the button, I hear it click under the hood. And then we sit here and wait a little bit, you know, however long it would be default to crank it for. And then, we, and then you hear it click back out and you get a couple bings. It's a pretty faint click. And everything else looks normal in here. Uh, the key, you know, the key fob here seems to work. And we try to start it with the remote. Remote start canceled, hood open. Okay, so we need to close the hood. But when I did that outside, it seemed to kind of go through the motions of, of that. It can detect the key. If I leave the key outside, it seems to detect it. So I'm thinking either the motor is seized or we just have a bad starter or, you know, something like that. Visual inspection under the hood, uh, I don't see anything, you know, glaringly obvious uh, when I kind of poke around here. I don't want to fiddle with too much, but we'll, um, I think the best idea, we'll raise it up. I'm going to close the hood so we can use the remote start to crank it, hopefully, and we'll just do a couple quick checks on the starter, see if it appears to be receiving all the signals. If it is, we'll have to get a starter to find out what the original problem with the, you know, the overheating is. So let's uh, do that. That's my plan. And if the remote start deal here doesn't work, we'll have an assistant come out and assist us. Of course, being a modern day car, we have the uh, oil absorption pad, or the uh, noise dampening, whatchamacallit thing under here. So we'll get that off so we can, you know, get to the starter wires and see what the heck's going on. So that's kind of interesting. Taking a lot of weird stuff out of uh, mats there, but a wheel weight came out of this one and a random white clip. So, yeah. Those little engine undercovers, boy, they sure hide a whole lot of sin. Yeah, oil leaks and everything on this fella. Fancy. Uh, before we get too far, uh, I did grab us a breaker bar here. I think I got the right size. Figure we'll just give a little spin on the old crank, make sure she turns over fine, can't imagine. Doesn't smell like it's been cooked, but figure we'll give her a little yank here. <laughs> or not. <laughs> we go this way. All right, that's interesting, I can turn the engine that way. Is this thing hydrolock? Oh yeah, I can hear, I can hear stuff going into the oil pan. I hear like a drizzle, it's like if I push, I'm gonna keep pushing tension on this thing. Oh, that's funny. I can hear something drizzling in the oil pan. Well, so I didn't expect to find that. Um, Needless to say, the starter is in the front. Uh, how about this? Her overheating and coolant loss and so on and so forth here. Could be a whole lot worse. Oh, right in the eye. Oh, gosh dang it. Crisis averted. How about this? How about before we even pull any spark plugs out of it, how about we just crack this baby loose and see because if there's coolant on a piston, it should be, I swear I can hear it dripping in there. So I hear it hiss. We're slowly barring the engine over, it's barely turning. But let's pop that plug out, let me go get a bucket here. I want that about 13 probably. Let's see if we move this where everybody can see in case it's epic. We don't want to miss the money shot. Thirteen. We're not gonna 
can't take it all the way out. Oh, we got poor light. We have poor lighting. We need good lighting because this, this might be epic. Let me move you. There's water in there. It should be at the very bottom. I don't want to take it all the way out. I just want it to drip. Oh, baby. That's not oil, lady. <laughs> Uh-oh, there's all your water you've been putting in it. Uh, I better go in the office and grab a fork, because <laughs> this one's done. Let me, uh, let me go get a bigger container. That ain't good, lady. That ain't good at all. Yeah, let's see, now we have an official bucket inside this little pan. Not really an official bucket, but a bigger bucket. Let's see how much we get out of here. Oh, not bad. We're right back to clean oil. Oh boy. Yeah, that's still pretty. That's a lot of water. It's still water there, I guess. Anyhow, she's been driving it like this. I'm sure she smoked. That's too bad. There we go, that looks, that looks like oil there. Oh, we probably got a half a quart of water out of the crankcase. She's been driving it like this as she's been adding adding water to it and having all these overheating problems. I'm afraid the show's over. Stick that pan inside. We could probably get it started by, I mean, damage is already done, folks. I could probably just keep holding over on this. I don't know how full that cylinder is, but I can just keep pushing here until we get it to go up the pair. she goes. That kind of sucks. I'll spin it over 360 degrees, not that it really matters, but now that we can get it to bar over, I'll just keep going here and then we'll just try to start it. Should start. With that being seized up, I don't know if there's a, come down here on your level, I don't know if there's a fuse for that starter or anything like that, but um, we can look into that just briefly. So looking on service data, I see that that 500 amper is the, the big guy that comes down here. Okay, yeah, so we do have a light here. I wonder if it smoked the starter. Um, go ahead and try to start it, Trinity. Okay, let off the brake and push the button again. Yeah, I, I can hear the solenoid engage. Um, let's go old school on this thing. Try to start it. Okay, push the button again. Yeah, shoot. Nothing we can really do there, folks. It's not uh, losing ground and it's not losing power while it's trying to crank. Um, no sense in checking the solenoid wire there because I can clearly hear the solenoid engage. Well, it is what it is. Starter's junk, so we can't really do much of anything beyond this. Hmm. Awesome. So we all know, or at least any of us that work in the shop, we all know that Chryslers are pretty much bottom of the bucket in the domestic world. However, this 3.6, this particular one they use in the Pacificas are pretty reliable for the most part. And the head gaskets are kind of unusual. I'm curious, <laughs> curiosity has got the best of me. I hate to call this lady and tell her that, you know, the engine's junk. Uh, so a couple things, the only other place I could think that it could get antifreeze into the engine is through the EGR cooler, which I've never seen one of those fail either. 
So well, I don't know. It's It'd be nice to know which cylinder had coolant on it. Maybe I'll pull this off, see if we can't look in through the throttle body, look at the EGR cooler, and if, I mean, if that thing's bone dry, then we know it's, you know, getting coolant into a cylinder via, you know, the head gasket, because the only other place it could come is this EGR cooler. EGR cooler's mounted here on the front of the engine. It's got a bunch of water hoses hooked to it, and then it hooks directly to the intake. But the intake's kind of a downhill slope here. So I would think that if this was, you know, dripping, uh, you know, overnight, I wouldn't think it would fill a cylinder. So, interesting. I've got my flashlight shoved in there. I can see the tube sticking through for the EGR cooler. And I think I see a puddle below it, but it might just be oil. I want to see if I can't get a bit of a sample here. I might, I might be wrong. It may just be the way I'm looking at it here. Oh yeah, I think I am wrong. Um, I just didn't want to, I, I didn't think I'd be able to see it this easily. I'm gonna go, go down in here. It just smells like oil to me. You know, obviously there's gonna be some crankcase gases in here. It's quite a ways in. Let me see if I can tell. Yeah, it just looks like looks like oil puddled up underneath it. Yeah, I don't I don't see any coolant in that. Um, I guess to be definitive, what we can do. Seems kind of silly at this point. I would think if that was leaking. Uh, coolant the inside of this intake would be steam cleaned. It would be bright and shiny and There's a lot of carbon. There's oil sitting in the intake. Like I said, that's kind of normal from the PCD system I mean, I suppose what we can do at this point I can pressurize it I can look directly at this EGR tube Which I don't believe is our culprit and then if all of a sudden our cylinder ends up full again or we don't see anything here then we know the only place it can be at that point is from the head in which case this lady knows she's had this engine hot she's overhead it whether that was the initial cause or not and then finding water in the crankcase there's no way i would recommend you know tearing this down to you know to pull a head on it i've been down that road too many times and i know that sounds silly to some of you but uh, as a shop, I'm not going to invest the time into taking this whole engine apart to find out the heads are so warped that we can't, you know, you can't machine them. The decks warp, the cylinders are out around. When we know it's been overhead, when we know the crankcase has been filled with water, then I make the call on it. It's a little bit of CYA, which means cover your hiney. I put about 15 pounds. Give it a little bit here, but like I said, I doubt it's coming out of this cooler because I can clearly see the the pipe on it and it's nice and sooty and yummy. So that's it folks, uh, not much more to see here. I did speak with the lady, uh, let her know what's going on. She said she wasn't surprised because <laughs> she had some other people look at it too and they were thinking, you know, head gaskets based on the symptoms it was having, the, you know, the coolant loss without a coolant leak and the overheating and everything that was going on with the vehicle. So I think it would be in our best interest as a shop to, you know, call it like it is. The starter is bad. Uh, which is pretty bizarre, but more than obvious when we test it. And B, the engine, in my opinion, is not worth tearing apart uh, simply because the amount of miles on it and the fact that she can get a used one cheaper than she can fix, you know, the one that's in it. Uh, or, you know, you may be one of those situations where you tear it apart, you send the heads to the machine shop, 
you know, they're too warped to do anything with. There's not enough material to, you know, resurface them or, you know, the deck's warped on the engine, you know, tear the engine out, rebuild it. It's easier just to get a low mileage used ones. These are usually pretty trouble free engines, so I'm kind of surprised. And that's it. Don't uh, surprise me by not commenting in that comment section down there. Questions, comments, concerns, Insta, the Facebook. You guys know what to do. Just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.